fact that you have two different issues of your magazine, you got like separate issues. You have a, a four time a year seasonal issue, which is your bigger issue that features more than what would be in your mid season issues. And you featured many people within the community that have also been previous guests and or cosplays of the week here on the show. Team Awesome 418, All-Star Cosplay, Sir Julius yeah. Cosplay, Amazon Daniela, Paper Moon Cosplay, Imposter Cosplay, and so many more. Can you give a little bit of an insight into precisely what the differences are between your seasonal issues in comparison to the mid-season issues? So our seasonal one is, is mostly it's cosplayers, photographers. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a featured guest who we, who we choose um, to have a more elaborate um, interview with. Right. Those, are, those have been kind of our three things that we like to put into those issues. And then now we're starting to add convention uh, coverage, nice. uh, articles from other people that submit their work. Over time, I feel like we could do a little bit, we do a little bit more. How do we fill these gaps? So we came up with the, the mid-season issue is, it's our shorter issue. It's, it's more affordable, but it has limited spaces. So this magazine is dedicated to showcasing more cosplay photography. I feel like I should be singing. Like, don't stop believing. I don't want to get copyright. First few seconds in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Side Project Podcast. Yes! Let's take a sip from our Run It Up mugs. Hmm. Oh, I need that water today. My eyes twitching. I think something went wrong, you guys. <laughs> I think something went wrong. I was I was working out. I was like, <laughs> I was literally bench pressing. I was like, ah, 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 ah. and then I felt like a strain in my face, dude. I was like pushing so hard. And then ever since my eyes been twitching, I definitely uh, something went <laughs> something went wrong there. I'm a little worried about it, but I'm gonna act like I'm not. Uh, that sip from my running up mug was absolutely amazing. And if you have yours and you put it up to the, your, I was gonna say put it up to the screen. I don't know why. If you put it up to the screen and you threw it all over your screen and you tasted it and you licked it off the screen, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you didn't, then you can get yours on the Side Project merch store available right now. And not only this mug, but the Project Park mug, the Project Things mug, and pretty much everything that you see me rocking here on every episode of the Side Project podcast, you can get available on the Side Project merch store except for this vintage 80s windbreaker <laughs> look at this thing dude rocking this man i just feel like you know i'm singing flock of seagulls songs everywhere i go and uh, and just you know what, what is it josie's on a vacation far away you know what i mean like i just feel like i just need to be busting out there i'm bringing it back dude somebody give me a headband i'm gonna rock the short shorts uh but anyway you can get everything on the side project merch store except for this vintage 80s um uh, windbreaker right now swishy swishy but you can if you want to if you want to windbreaker it up just a little bit you can get one and it is the project park champion collab fleece jacket available on the side project merch store right now it's not new it's been up there for a while but maybe you haven't seen it project oh no it's over here god those uh, me and me and the you know, me you know project park fleece champion look at that uh, can you see it yeah you can see it champion uh collab available on the side project merch store right now so you can rock that. That's about the closest thing I've got to a windbreaker, as well as uh, as well as the uh, I haven't rocked this in a while, dude. The project uh, project network tee. Look at that. Come on, take it in. <laughs> you know you want one. It's available on the Side Project merch store right about now, alongside all kinds of other things and hoodies and uh, hoodies, tees, beanies, hats. Um, there's sweats on there. There's shorts up there. There's uh, what else? Hoodies, beanies, tees, tees, sweats, 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 sweats. Gotta think about my logos. I've been, I've been gone for a while. I've been in London. Anyway, uh, you can go get those on the Side Project merch store right about now. But anyway, let's get to the bread and the butter of this week's episode because my guest this week, we have a lot in common, having a knack for showcasing the amazing talent within the cosplay community because my guest this week is an entrepreneur, the co-owner of a magazine you've all come to know and love that shares the same love and appreciation as I do for a community filled with amazing cosplayers, photographers, and editors. A magazine that is both physical and digital that takes those within the community and highlights them.
them in two separate ways, two separate issues of availability. One, a seasonal issue four times a year with multiple photo showcases alongside a featured guest Q&A, an issue that could be 40 pages plus a little more intricate, detailed, and informative. Then there's a mid-season issue, 24 pages, 24 full pages dedicated to single photo showcases of, quote, the best cosplayers and photographers that submit a smaller, straight-to-the-point mag to fill the space between seasons. My guest this week, some would say it's been a long time coming, and the time is now that the two of us come together just a little bit more. So let's put our hands together and give a warm welcome to Kyle Gartner of Creative Cosplays Magazine. <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, dude, I think you might be muted, brother. I can't hear you. Uh, there we go. What's going yeah. on, Chad? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on, yes. everybody? How are you, Chad? I don't know if we should cut that or leave it, dude. That, that's good. I don't know what this good what moments to here. Editing Chad, he'll figure it out. How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, brother, man. Um, it's pleasure, f- pleasure. Thanks oh, for having man. me on here. Of course, dude. Of your course. intros never disappoint. I was excited to see what you're going to come up with, and <laughs> dude, I love it. I love watching your your channel. All your, oh, thanks, all your episodes man. are amazing. Thank you, man. Did I, pronou- um, did I pronounce be, the last name right? Here. Kirkner, yeah, you, okay, you got it. I got it. You never know. You know what I mean? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I see names that you think are, you know, they're spelled exactly how you would think it was going to be pronounced, yes. and then it's pronounced yes. super weird. You know what I mean? Right, I'm like, right. I understand. Damn it, you guys, you know what I mean? Like, I totally get it. Oh man, I'm stoked to have you here, dude. It's been a long time coming. It really has. You know what I mean? I dude, feel like this yeah. should have happened a long time ago, but I'm glad that it's happening now. When the show is what it is, when you've got yeah. even more to talk about, even more magazine exactly. covers and issues and everything going on, and then conventions coming up that we've met at in the past. Uh, I mean, conventions that we've met at in the past, including conventions that we're uh, both going to be at coming up soon, uh, I think now actually is a very fitting time, and it's a long time coming, but I'm glad that we did it now, actually, man. I'm stoked yeah, to have you Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Of course, man. Dude, let's, let's jump right in, man. You know, I, I'd like to think that the, the, the majority of people, if not all, uh, that tune into this show are also aware of Creative Cosplays Magazine. I, I, feel, I feel like, you know, we kind of go hand in hand within the community, if I say so myself, and, and, and whether they are or they aren't something that they may uh, may not be aware of either way is the how and and the why and what I mean by that is like the story behind your journey into creating this magazine to highlight others and the story of not necessarily cosplaying yourself I know you dabble in it but yet still being involved in the cosplay community something that the two of us yet again uh, a lot of what we do actually uh, just done in different ways are synonymous with one another and we can relate to one another uh, I didn't start cosplaying myself until recently but uh, but have been and am thankful to be accepted in this community so you have this love and appreciation for cosplay without necessarily being the focus of it yourself is where I'm going with this where did that stem from from and how did it turn into a journey of not only highlighting others but doing so in the form of a magazine like what's your beginning days until now what's what's your story of the how when where and why all right how far back do you want to time travel <laughs> See. as far back as, now, you, as you feel it makes sense man <laughs> well i've grown up as a as a graphic designer for most of my most of my life since since high school i was into that stuff yeah very creative minded person when i was in college i went to college in philadelphia um, at the artist to the time I mean, that was back in 2017 ish. Where and that's when I intended my first uh, cosplay, or not cosplay, but uh, Comic Con. It was in Philadelphia, and that's when the first time I dressed up. That was the first time I was in cosplay. I was the symbiote Spider Man. I was going to ask what you went around. Went as. That's dope. Yeah, nice. yeah, it was sick, and it was, it was a fun experience. But I never, I never had anybody to kind of to kind of keep doing that with. So over time, I did. I just didn't really. Yeah do it as much but then i met my wife um in 2016 Mm -hmm. Uh, we worked together and found out when we met that she's she's a big nerd too so i was like oh how about that and we had uh actually our second date was uh to the same con that i i went to back then in philadelphia oh nice um and that's where we both we both dressed up i was spider-man she was which she was like a mary jane uh, nice hell yeah too little so that was a, that was a fun little date. Right. But then we find out. I mean, we love this cosplay community, right? Mm-hmm. It's so cool. So we tried to keep up with it over over three years. We we attended events. We dressed up. But yeah. um, we we had our I mean, we had our first child in that time period also, and that kind of prevented us from dressing up. So we're like, how can we still kind of right. be involved within the community with all these friends that we've met? Um, so we so I mean, I was like, and then Chantel started a share page on Instagram, right? 
um, that she she got pretty big. It was a good start, and then yeah. uh, we, we just realized one day, like, hey, how how can we stay involved and kind of use the share page and build from that right. to do a magazine and uh, give the opportunity to the others. To, I mean, I'm a creative person. This is something I could do. Yeah. Why not type of thing, right? So, yeah. well, so we've been doing it since then. We have about 30, 30 plus issues now uh, under our belt, a mix of like what you said at the intro, yeah. uh, mid-season, mid-season seasonal issues uh, that we'll talk about more a little bit later. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Met your wife, stayed involved, couldn't cosplay yeah. as much. And want the, the share page that you have, you can go ahead yeah. and you can plug the share page too for anybody that doesn't, because you have two pages so, on Instagram. You have two, right. two different pages. Yeah, yeah. So, so on Instagram, our main page, the share page that started everything was the creative dot cosplays. Right. Um, and then, yeah, now we have our creative cosplays mag uh, on Instagram too. So nice. Yeah. So the creative have- cosplays one, and it's just kind of like sharing, sharing other cosplayers, right? Like reposting yeah, awesome so, cosplays yep. and stuff that you like and whatnot. Right. And, and, and right. again, giving them some, some love and some highlight and trying to help them even further uh, get, get, right, get yeah. seen. And then you have the creative cosplays mag Instagram, which is more focused on the magazine itself Correct, um, yeah. that you, that you created with, with your wife to stay involved in the community. That's pretty cool though, dude. That's pretty cool. Yeah, cool. so this this was kind of became an extension of that share page um, yeah. to give people that that experience. You know, I don't know if you've been in a magazine or not, but it's so yeah. cool when you like get a magazine and you're in it. And you're like, yeah. whoa! I mean, exactly. That, that's a cool feeling. It's like, why not? We can we can give that to other yeah. people too. I mean, when you when you guys not, were so. like having the conversation of like, okay, like let's take this share page that we're doing and let's do something else with it, or let's take it to another level. However, it is that your guys's conversation went. Like, how did you land on magazine out of out of all things? I'm like, I'm just curious because like. It, there, for so many different reasons. Like, I'm curious, like, did you, was it because you wanted something physical? Like, did you um, think about it being physical and, 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 or digital? Like, did you want to combine things? Like, how did you land on that? We, we had seen, um, other magazines out there mm-hmm. and we, and we realized there was a, a small little group of people that were doing magazines at the time. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was just something that I knew I could, I could do. And it, and it wasn't, I mean, it was, it's, it's just fun. It's just fun to be involved yeah. in creating magazines. Just to, have, so. just to have something there. I think it is a cool aspect though, to have like something physical for people in, yeah, in, right. in a digital world that we live in. It's like, you have the option of having cre- creative cosplays magazine digitally, but then you also have the option of having it physically. And I think yeah, that's kind right. of cool. Like as a cosplayer too, um, for these people, I'm going to, I'm going to put a little bit of my own, um, my own thoughts and opinions on, on, on this. And you tell me if you, if you kind of agree, uh, on reasons, reasonings on why I kind of did the podcast the way that I did, uh, and do and how it turned in into what it is today, where it's more cosplay focused. And then also with the cosplay of the week, because I didn't start as uh, somebody who's cosplaying himself first. I started as just doing this. So to me, I looked at all of these things and I was like, wow, like this is amazing. Like number one, this is like phenomenal. This is amazing. Like look at all this stuff that they're able to achieve, you know, to do, to accomplish and to oftentimes do better than, you know, million dollar, billion dollar budget Hollywood movies at that, you know, and the ways that they're able to replicate what occurs in in the comics you know and then it comes to the prop makers the editors the photographers and everything in between i felt like man these people deserve the praise that um you know people like you give them people like me people like editors help photographers also you know help bring to life i wanted to do something to help bring that to life even more um so i don't know if you feel kind of the same way on reasonings on doing that and then uh to bring it back to the fact of the magazine is a magazine and it's physical it's really cool to have something physical in a digital world that we live in um for various reasons because i think i think you know in a digital world it's cool, like when I'm, I'm not. I feel like I don't want to say this because I don't want to like down myself in the process. But like you know, they're featured as the cosplay of the week, and it's posted, you know, and it's there forever. Don't get me wrong. But then like Instagram, for instance, you're posting, you're posting, you're posting, and that gets down, down, down on the list, down on the list, down on the list. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that kind of you don't. It's not something physical that you get to have and keep. Whereas a magazine, if you have the option and you want to, yeah. um, you can purchase that magazine and you can hold on to that physically forever. And it's you on the yeah. cover or you in the pages. Like, was that other, ever something that you thought about? Oh, or definitely. like, did you do agree with anything that I said? Like, I, yeah, hundred percent. That's yeah. exactly, exactly my thoughts. Yeah. Having that physical copy. Cause yeah, like you said, everything's digital these yeah. days. I mean, you, you, you post all these memories that you easily, you quickly forget about right. uh, in, in a week. Um, so having, having, you know, having a physical copy and be able to see that, like you said, to hold on to that memory yeah. in time, that snapshot. 
Yeah. Um, that moment you of like, show people and be like, yes, Hey, look at yeah, like, exactly. Like that's me. Like I did this. Yeah, like, right. You know, I'm so thankful and, for this. And, and man, this having this as a platform for people to, to get their, yeah, their amazing work that, yeah. that they work, they spend a lot of time on working on to give them that extra platform to, yeah. to really showcase their hard work. Oh, uh, 100%. We uh, yeah, we can't do this uh, magazine without, without all of you guys out there. And, and, uh, yeah, a hundred percent, dude. Um, I touched on it uh, a little bit in the intro. I, I built it up a little bit in, in the fact that you have two different issues of your magazine. You got like separate issues. You have a, a four time a year seasonal issue, which is your bigger issue that features more than what would be in your mid season issues. And you featured many people within the community that have also been previous guests and or cosplays of the week here on the show, whether that be in the <laughs> seasonal or the mid season, such as Team Awesome 418, All Star Cosplay, Sir Julius yeah. Cosplay play amazon daniela paper moon cosplay imposter cosplay and so many more and throughout the different issues some have covers some have a, a page displaying their cosplay some have a, a bit of a more of a, of a description in there some may have a full q a some may be cosplayers some may be photographers can you give a little bit of an insight into precisely what the differences are between your seasonal issues in comparison to the mid-season issues? So we started this uh, doing four issues a year. That was, okay, we're going to start this off slow, mm -hmm. see, what's, see what's about. So we started off uh, in the summer of 19. So at that point, we, we weren't sure uh, what we were going to do. So we, you know, we just try to throw in, you know, your cosplayers. We want to highlight what we don't have. Like right. Cosplayers, what typical magazines usually have just to kind of test the waters. So our seasonal one is, is mostly it's cosplayers, photographers. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, a featured guest who we who we choose um, to have a more elaborate um, interview with. Right. Those are those have been kind of our three things that we like to put into those issues, and then now we're starting to add convention uh, coverage, nice. uh, articles from other people that submit their work. Nice. Uh, so trying to kind of keep that our thicker magazine, the, right? The one that holds a lot of um, awesome talent, right? Um, a little bit more detailed, informative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over time, we, I feel like we could do a little bit. We do a little bit more. How do we fill these gaps? So we came up with the, the mid-season issue, yeah. which is it's our shorter issue. It's it's more affordable, but it has limited spaces. So, so this magazine is dedicated to showcasing more cosplay photography, okay, rather okay. than cosplayers. It's more of like a photographer showcase. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at some right now. It's just usually like just one page. It'll have yeah. like the so cosplayer's submits, name, right? Yeah. So everybody who submits gets a, that gets that full page showcase. Nice. Uh, which which limits the amount of uh, pages we can, or spaces within that magazine. So it's, there's a little bit more competition, which means people tend to have better quality photos. So the better quality ones right. kind of make it into the issue. Um, nice. Just to make sure like that's a really good, solid photography issue. Right. Um, Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking at these and, and forgive me. Cause I, I actually, this is my fault. I didn't, I didn't write this one down. I'm looking at one of these photos right here where it has uh, Joshua J black. And then below it has previous cosplay of the weekend guest, uh, Sir Julius cosplay. Uh, and you kind of have, you know, you have two of oh, them yeah. on, on one page and like half the page is one person. The other half is the other person. And it's all these like different boxes thrown in with all the pictures. Is that the mid season yeah. or is that the, uh, the seasonal? That, that is the seasonal one. That's yeah. the seasonal one. Okay. That's where yeah, you have right. yeah. a lot more. And some of them have little, yeah. little blurbs and bios and some don't right. uh when it comes to like those those little bit of uh those bios there like for instance sir julius cosplay in this specific example has like a you know a little bit of a longer bio in comparison to joshua j black is that something that you do or is that something that they also submit like they submit their own bios yeah so part of our submission form process mm -hmm. uh we, we collect just some basic information just to contact them and then um they have the options to provide the information that they want to showcase so gotcha. some people only oh, some people only have an instagram handle some people just have their name right and they just want the, some instagram but there is an option on that form to create a short bio to kind of promote yourself however you like so that's just that and that varies between everybody so everybody's got their own preferences yeah it's pretty cool i see some people have a little bit of a longer like a little bit of a paragraph some people have a couple, yeah. a couple sentences some just right. some just promote their social media and don't say anything and then and then there's mm. there's cosplay ben that was like what's up guys i'm cosplay ben i cosplayed the guy from Fortnite. that was it yeah right, right. <laughs> i thought that yeah, was they're free, they're free to say whatever they want yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool but i mean i dig it man you know and it, and it definitely is like a high quality showcase of everybody within the community and and I, I dig it i also i dig the way that you know it's um you know have that for the seasonal ones where it's like the half the page and it's you know different um two different cosplayers and then all like the uh, uh um well, what would you call those like the um the boxes and the placements, you know what I mean? The graphics that you have of, yeah. of several different um, photos. Stuff, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Too. The, the way you have it laid out is really cool. Like you do that yourself or? 
Yep, yep, that's all nice, me. Nice, man. Yeah, because yeah, I know you mentioned you have a history with graphic design and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool, dude. I mean, the workload of like putting together a, a magazine to begin with can be a, a task within itself. Your seasonal issue is chock full of details and it comes four times a year. And then you have those mid-season issues as, as well. Uh, what was the reasoning behind having seasonal and, and mid-season as opposed to something with like just sticking to f those four bigger seasonal issues a year. I know you kind of touched on it a bit a second ago, but like, what was the reason behind that? And, you know, maybe, maybe just not simply having like just more seasonal issues a year or just those four or sizing those <laughs> seasonal issues down and, and having a, a number of those, like, I guess what I'm asking is what prompted you to run it this way specifically, like the reason behind the formula of having four seasonal issues and then, uh, you know, mid season issues in between and how many mid season issues do you usually have? So the mid season started because the number of people who are interested in claiming that cover, mm -hmm. you know? So, it, so one, it, one got in, more and one more over time, I bet, right? <laughs> right. That, yeah. that list began to get longer and there's only four issues mm -hmm. a year. So how can I, how can I provide more opportunity for people to get on, to get on the cover of a magazine? Yeah. Cause you know, that's, that's an awesome place to be, right? Yeah. hundred percent. So with our seasonal issues, the featured guests are usually chosen a little bit ahead of time so we can pre prepare for that. Mm -hmm. um, but the mid season is more random who as far as far as who gets that cover spot and, nice. and it really depends on the photo the quality of the photo and how it works and you know if it, if it looks it would work well as a cover magazine so it gives more people an opportunity to be on the front or back of that cover of that magazine also as a gap filler between the seasons you know, three months is a long time yeah. and plenty of time to squeeze in another magazine so right um, and then we've also tr attempted to do themed magazines. Uh, yeah, you've done separate. some special magazines too, right? Right, yeah. yeah. We were doing that back during COVID when mm -hmm. I was working from home and had a little bit more time yeah. to work on other issues. Yeah. But uh, times have changed and mm -hmm. that extra work kind of had to simplify yeah. uh, everything down to just those two. So we have four seasonals a year and then we have the four in between. So Nice. Okay. So eight issues a year. That's um, a good amount, man. About, yeah, That's man. a good amount, dude. That's a good amount. Is it, is it, is it, I, I have to ask because like, I know what it can be like, as do many people when it comes to creativity, when it comes to creating something, especially from scratch, whether that be uh, in an entertainment field, whether that be at the hands of, a, of an entrepreneurial field and starting a business, when you're taking an idea or a dream or a passion and turning it into something full-fledged, that takes time, that takes effort, that takes dedication, that takes money, your own hard-earned money thrown in to make something shine in your vision. And I said that many people may know and understand, but there's also a lot of people, especially in in this day and age where things move so fast, where we're focused on this for seconds today, and then it's in the past tomorrow. And sometimes in the same day, it's already a, a, a past thought. There's also yeah, many people who may not have any idea until they see, hear, or experience themselves what goes into building something on your own. So when it comes to the time, the effort, the money, the dedication that goes into running Creative Cosplays Magazine, what, you know, what are the hardships? What are the ups and downs? What are the pros and cons of running a magazine in 2024? Mm, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it can, it can definitely be hard because like you said, this is mostly run by myself, honestly. Right. Uh, we do have a little team that we've put together, but right. it's mostly volunteers, which is much appreciated. But right. like you said, uh, money, a lot of money, my own money goes into all this. Mm -hmm. This is more of a this has become like a dedication type of thing. This is a, yeah. this is something, this is something fun for me that I enjoy doing aside from my full-time job. This is a great escape, you know, and, and wanting, and wanting to just see, kind of learn through the process and, and try to see if I could build this into something a little bit, uh, as much as I can, just to right. see where it goes, you know? Right. Is it, is it, I mean, four, four, eight, I mean, eight issues technically a, a, a year. I mean, does it take up a lot, a lot of your time? I mean, regardless of it being like a passion project, that's the thing is like when something is like a passion project, when you have a passion for it, you're not necessarily looking at it like, everything has pros and cons, right? And everybody goes through mm -hmm. it. We're human. We go through emotions. Like even me, like sometimes like things get overwhelming, right? People often ask me like, how do you do everything that you're doing and still live like a regular life? Like it's, you're all over the place. And hundred percent, I'm still human. I just may not talk about it publicly or anything, but I'm still, <laughs> I'm still human, right? And I even go through my times where I'm like, yo, I just need like a minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I need a second. But I mean, do you ever have those moments regardless of it being like such a passion project? Do you ever have those moments where you're just like, man, this is like, this is a lot right now. And if 
you do, like what, what keeps you going, you know, and get you back on that track where you're like, all right, bam, you know, full steam ahead. And then you're like, all right, I'm good. I got this. And then you get back into, you know, Kyle Kirkner mode. You know what I mean? Uh, the reaction I get from the magazines, uh, is what really pushes me forward. Right. Uh, the good comments, everybody's yeah. just the nice words of like, I can't believe this. Yeah. Like, um, just but the, that, the way the, that it, it makes them feel, right? Yeah, exactly. And the reactions like, that yeah, you see reactions. makes you feel. Yes, I mean, we have that, yeah, bro. We just, have, just, I, just I keep feel on the going. same way. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's what keeps if me going, any, too. If there's any hardship, yeah, if there's any hardships, you know, I read those comments and yeah. it just pushes me forward. It so. kind of reminds you, like, if you ever have that moment where you're like, man, I just need a minute. And then like, and like especially in those times, if you've ever had one, uh, I'm sure any, anybody could relate to this. Like even cosplayers themselves, I hear them talking about, they feel down and they're like, I don't know, I'm just going to stop cosplaying. You know what I mean? Like I've had people who will, will, re who will re remain nameless, who have reached out to me and talked to me before and been like, I don't know about this anymore. I just kind of feel like I'm just going to quit. Like, I'm just not feeling it. You know, like people just aren't receptive mm -hmm. or, you know, Instagrams, you know, the algorithms really not helping helping me anymore, you know, which is trash for everybody, by the way, it's everybody. Um, and, and you have those moments where you're feeling that, that way. And then you get like a cool DM or a cool comment or yeah. like somebody shares something and then it just like lights you up inside. Like, even if it's not about you, like in this case for the mm -hmm. magazine, like somebody shares uh, the magazine and they're like, oh my God, I'm so happy that I made this. Or like, even if it's like right. throw back to that time where I was on the cover of creative cosplays, yes. you know what I mean? And then you're like, oh man, like this is why I do it. Like I'm, yeah, I'm man, good. It's, it's cool. <laughs> those plus are the, those plus moments. The community, plus the community is so awesome, man. Yeah, exactly. This is one of the best, I always say, man, yeah, this is one of the best it. communities ever, dude. Like it really is like, like despite all the crap that's going on, we, a lot of people know, despite all the crap that's going on with Instagram and like numbers being lower and people not seeing stuff and people saying like, I can't even, my friends say they don't even see my content. Hey man, I'm feeling it too. You know what I mean? Mm. Despite all of that, uh, this community as a whole is like one of the best communities that I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. You know what I mean? And it's like, you, you, you meet like all these people online that are sharing all of these same, you know, feelings and emotions and love for things that usually stem from like nerdum and geekdom and you know what I mean? Whether it be uh, cosplay itself or like comics and, and, uh, and, and movies and animation or video games or whatever it may be. And then you forge these relationships with them through uh, all of these like-minded things. And then also when it comes to people like you and I who are sharing people in the community, we also forge those relationships through the fact that we, you know, shared them and, and communicated with them on the things that they're doing and the awesome job that they have. And then you get to know that person a little bit more mm -hmm. Then maybe you forge, you know, a working relationship or a friendship or, or like me, a, an actual relationship, like a love loving <laughs> relationship. Um, like, uh, and it's like nothing, I, I don't think there's anything else like it like to be honest yeah. with you you know what i mean i really don't think there is and the community is is absolutely awesome so i i share that with you man of like yeah giving back to this community because they deserve it dude you know what i mean right exactly it's yeah. awesome dude and and those moments when you get that those pick me ups and when someone shares your shares your stuff uh even if it's not yours and it's something that you did for them those are those are awesome yeah. moments man and um speaking of awesome moments i want to talk to you a little bit more about a couple more things but before we do that let's break up the monotony and let's get it to this week's Cosplay of the Week! Oh! And this week's Cosplay of the Week is a very long time coming, and it is Poison! And I'm throwing it up on the screen right about the... Wow! Now! And it is of her, Domino, and this... This has been a long time coming, like I said. This has been in the vault for so long. Poison, you've been in the vault for so long. And for those that aren't watching, if you happen to just be listening, because surprisingly, real quick, sidebar, this is very much so from the beginning days of this show to today, this is very much so become a massively visual show. When I first started, it was a little bit of both catering to that real true podcast listener form, but now it's a very visual show. And I never really cater to the, just the listeners, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got a few randomly people saying that they love to listen. And I was like, oh, well, you know, do you watch? You can watch on, you can watch on YouTube and you can watch on Spotify as well. Videos are available on Spotify. And they're like, ah, it's easier for me to listen while I'm at work. And I'm like, oh, that's totally cool though. So for the listeners, maybe I should start spelling a few things here, here and there. Like I used to, that's P zero I S O N underscore for poison. And this is her domino. And this is absolutely amazing. I love everything about this man. Uh, and the edit is by a previous guest on the show graphics by JMD. 
Um, and beautifully done, man. Beautifully done. Looks like a movie poster, dude. I don't know. Forgive me. I don't know if you took inspiration from uh, a comic cover on this, uh, you know, a poster of some kind. Uh, I don't know what you took inspiration from, if it was, or if you just created something yourself. Do let me know if you want. Uh, but it does look like it could be a recreation of a comic. It looks like a, a, a poster. Uh, it looks like a, a movie poster. If Domino was in a game, which she might have been in like the Deadpool game, there's a Deadpool game that if anybody's never played, go play it. It's hilarious and it's awesome. Uh, I think it's available on Steam. Steam. I don't know about like Xbox and PlayStation and all that. Um, but this is, this is awesome, man. From head to toe, from the, from the hair. I don't know if it's a wig. I don't know if you just, um, put the little, the little, uh, a white streak in there yourself to the makeup is on point to the bodysuit down to the, um, to the, to the, to the gloves and, and the boots and everything in between. I love the belt with the X symbol on there, the X force symbol, I believe on the neck, on the belt. Uh, and then of course the weapon there, the prop weapons, YouTube and Instagram prop weapons, fake weapons, Nobody's dying here tonight uh, or today, whenever you're watching this. Absolutely amazing. And I do want to throw up a second shot of her domino and throwing up that. I'm throwing up that. I'm throwing that up right about now. And this is an awesome shot by Jonathan W. Cabrera. Jonathan underscore W underscore Cabrera on Instagram of her domino again in the car. I love that shot with the face in the mirror. I have a shot like that too. I did a video like that of, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, Captain Juicebox, previous co-host on the show way back, like four years ago when I first started. Uh, um, I love those kind of shots. Those are awesome shots, man. Uh, her face in the mirror with the, with the weapon in hand outside of the car. She could be driving. This could be like the enemies just pulled up and they're like getting ready to get her. They think they got the upper hand on her. This is my imaginative mind working. They think they got the upper hand on her. And then she's like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, pulls out the gun, hangs it out the window. You know what I mean? Is looking straight because maybe there's cars or there's a red light. Maybe there's some kids crossing and Domino it's all about saving the kids, right? And then what you don't see here is when she did that little, she's looking up like this, right? Looking up. And then when she did that little glance in the mirror at the villains and they were like, ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. We, we fucked up, guys. Run it back. They hit it in reverse. And they, they dip out. Never mind. Never mind. And they dip out. This is absolutely amazing. Amazing shot. Uh, I love everything about this. This one's a little bit more about Jonathan's shot. It, it's, just, it's just perfectly done, man. I dig it. How you can still see her face with the, with the domino makeup and everything. And then I want to throw up a third one before we get up out of here. And I'm throwing that up right about now. And this is another edit by Graphics by JMD, previous guest on the show. And uh, this is of her Sally from the Nightmare Before. Before, a nightmare before Christmas, and I think this got overlooked, if you ask me, all right? I don't think this got enough love. I think the nightmare before Christmas deserves a lot more love. I think Sally deserves a lot more love. I think Poison and JMD, JMD deserve a lot more love because this is perfect, man. This is just great. I love everything about this. Phenomenal. And she's got so many other awesome cosplays that you have to go check out. If you're not, go follow her at P0ISON underscore on Instagram. And uh, we've got guest Kyle Kirkner on the show of Creative Cosplays Magazine, the owner, the co-owner, if you will, of Creative Cosplays Magazine on the show this week. And we're talking about all things from the magazine, all the details that you ever wanted to get. If you have any questions or you wanted some insight on how he started it, why he started it, where he started it, and just all everything in between. Kyle Kirkner is the guest on the show this week. In case you're just watching this on Instagram, it's just a clip on Instagram and you haven't watched the full episode, do go watch it. Kyle, before we wrap this segment up, do you have anything that you want to add about Poison? Yeah, man. Poison's work is insane. We've uh, been lucky enough to feature some of her work in our issues, which has been great. And then we met her uh, last year at Cosplay World, yeah. uh, which... Um, we're doing uh, again this year, and she'll yeah. be a guest there as well. Yeah, yes. her and um, Joey, Joey, Joey Redder, Redder, right? previous guest and cosplay of the week on the show as well. Yes, yeah, exactly. Great, great man. people, great people. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not following Poison, please go do so right now. As all of her cosplays are absolutely awesome, and uh, Poison, your Domino and Sally cosplay of the week for me and Kyle of Creative Cosplays Magazine is amazing. <laughs> Oh man, Kyle, I said I wanted to talk yes, to you a little bit more about the magazine and everything, but before we do that, I want to throw a little bit of a curveball at you, and I want to get into a segment that I like to call, wow, Shotgun Questions, and what Shotgun Questions is, is a little bit more of a rapid fire segment that never ends up being that rapid fire, we always end up having a conversation about it, and that's okay, some guests know that it's coming, some guests don't know that it's coming, some know that it's coming, but they just don't know when it's coming, it's a series of maybe three to four questions, maybe two to four questions actually would be a better description that uh, are just all fun and games. It's nothing serious. It's all just fun and games. Let's see how much fun we could have when I ask you. 
Do you have a top three cosplays that you've always wanted to cosplay yourself, but for whatever reason, haven't pulled the trigger? So I've done Iron Man, but nice. I've always wanted to do the 3D printed Iron Man series. Right. You see, like, frankly, frankly built doing like, yes, that would, that would be awesome to have and yeah, try out. But right. um, a lot of work. So I haven't done that yet. Yeah, it's a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work, uh, a lot of more work than I have time for, unfortunately. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. And then so now I'm working on a new suit. An Iron Man uh, medieval, like a Roman. Oh, dude, nice. Iron Man. Yeah, hell so yeah. I'll, I'll be testing. I'll be. I'll be showcasing that and testing it out at uh, Cosplay World. I saw that. Yeah, I think you. You did you discuss that, or was that was that that one, or was that a different one? Yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, I thought I saw that. Yeah, so I'll yeah. be testing that one out. Nice. But now, but now there's a lot of costumes that we want to do that are some of our characters from our comic book that we've created. Right. Uh, it's called Steel Nova, mm -hmm. and we have some uh, various characters in that that would be awesome to cosplay. I don't think I'd be able to do it <laughs> or any of them, so it's a matter of yeah. if we can find some volunteers out there willing to try it out. Yeah. Uh, let, let me know, yeah. Hell yeah, definitely, man, definitely. Uh, next question. Out of these Batman, you've got Keaton, Bale, Affleck, Pattinson. You can only choose one, and the rest and their universe cease to exist. Who do you pick? I'm a Keaton guy. Yeah. A Keaton guy. Wow, that was a fast answer, dude. Uh, he, that was, I like that one. Um, wait, wait, so who are you, so, oh, that wasn't so your I final would, answer. I thought that was the final answer. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll keep that one. Yep. Oh, you keep Okay, all right, Keaton. Wow, that was yeah. a fast answer. That was, that was quick. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, the X-Men. Are a hot topic right now, and, uh, and 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 you know, especially with X Men '97 and all that stuff being uh, being being you know just finishing and everything right now. Did you watch X Men '97? Or I did not. Oh, not no. yet. Yes. Okay. All right. I, yeah, I gotta watch it. <laughs> okay. I won't say anything else, but there is a hot topic right now. So um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, being that it's such a hot topic, I, I I don't know your level of 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 how much you're into the X Men, but I'm sure you like X Men at some point in your life in, in some sort of way. Um, I'm curious if you have any, what, what, what are some things that you want from the MCU when mm -hmm. they do the X-Men in film? And I'll give you some examples uh, so, you can, so you can think about it for a sec. Maybe it's mutants that you want to be focused on, right? Maybe it's villains that you think need to be portrayed. Maybe it's something that you think, uh, you know, from a production standpoint that Disney can learn from their past, whether that be good or bad, and apply to when the mutants make their appearance on the big screen. Um, what are some things that you want from the MCU's X-Men? Man, the MCU really has been kind of messing things up lately. Yes, I agree. Uh, I agree. I so, mean, I wish they can just get figure out how to get back on board right? onto that right track again. Just, I, I don't know. know. I don't know what it'll take. Now it's just a matter of just pumping out stuff that yeah. they're trying to connect in. It's just making a mess. But uh, one one thing I do want to see, uh, I don't know if it will ever be possible, but the fight between uh, Wolverine and Hulk. Yes! Oh, how, man! How can, we, how can we turn that into a, a movie scene? Uh, yes. Some kind of opportunity, right? Uh, yes. I mean, there's a flurry man. of rumors going around with Deadpool and Wolverine, which is, there's going to be, and not all of them are going to yeah. end up being factual. Um, but, you know, because it is kind of, it was well, not kind of, it is a multiverse movie again, you know? Um, and they're dealing with the TVA in those trailers. We've seen the TVA. Mm -hmm. We've seen, you know, the, lo the lo from Loki, the TVA. We've seen, uh, you know, different... Um, X-Men characters from Fox, from, from Marvel, yeah. from whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot going on in that film and I'm sure we're in for a lot of surprises as well. Mm. Um, one of the rumors going around is that there's supposed to be a Wolverine versus X-Men fight. Uh, but they don't know how intricate it is. Is it happening for us on the screen? You know, is it just a glimpse of a moment that happened in the past from another universe? Or is it just mentioned and talked about? But supposedly rumors are that a Wolverine Hulk interaction is supposed to be in that movie. Is that oh, even a, truthful? Who knows? Man. But if yeah, that's the one, that's one battle I really, yeah, really want to see. Me too. Uh, dude. On the screen, on the main screen. Yeah. yeah. Especially with, uh, if you got Hugh Jackman for it. Yes, dude. Yes, dude. There's this one like image. I don't remember if it's from a comic or if it was just like an artist rendition. Um, and, and forgive me if I'm, if I'm, con if I'm putting more characters in this image that, than I remember, but I swear there was an image where, it's Wolverine, Hulk, and Spider-Man. And Spider-Man is on Hulk's like shoulder and he's like doing the, the Spidey pose. Uh -huh. And I think like Wolverine's got his claws out. I think like Hulk and Wolverine are about to fight or something. And then Spidey's on Hulk's uh, shoulders. I, I remember seeing something like that. And again, forgive me if I'm incorrect on any of that, but man, I would love to see that played out too. Like just my yes. childhood moments of like all of those characters. Those are like my, that's my childhood, man. I want to see yeah. it, dude. And then also real quick, this is not part of the shotgun questions, but um, in, in that rumored, uh, this is just me improv in that rumored Deadpool Hulk interaction that's supposed to occur. Um, 
it's not stated on which Hulk it is. The rumor is doesn't clarify. I mean, it says yeah. in the rumor, it, right. even, it even says like they're not certain if it's Mark Ruffalo, if it's um, Edward Norton's Hulk, <laughs> or if it's, um, what's his name? Um, um, uh, what's, what is his oh, name? Man. I forget. Uh, Jeez. Is it I have, Eric Bana? Yeah. Is it Eric? Yeah, Bana? is that that is that would be I think him, that's I, right. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo, Edward Norton, Eric Bana. I think so. Uh, if it's Edward uh, Eric Bana's Hulk, either it's not sure on which three it would be. I'm you're you're missing out on another one. Though. What about Lou? Oh, uh, Lou Ferrigno, Ferrigno right? dude. Yeah, yeah. What if it's Lou Ferrigno, dude? <laughs> <laughs> that's I didn't even think about that. What if it's just Lou Ferrigno all painted up? And is it is it That'd CGI so old Lou Ferrigno or is it uh, you know I, no, no. or is it now Lou Ferrigno? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, but uh, which one would you want to see? Like, if you if we did get a Wolverine and Hulk interaction, which Hulk do you, uh, would you want to see most? I'll, the Ruffalo one. The Ruffalo yeah. one, yeah. yeah, just keep, yeah. Just keep him going. Keep, keep yeah. an MCU, I guess you know, in a sense. Um, but I kind of I wish he looked more like the the Ed Norton. Yes, one. Yes, dude. Uh, me too, dude. The, the way they did they did that Hulk uh, was yeah. mind blowing for me. Yeah, and the fight against Abomination and stuff. Yeah, dude, that was a good oh, fight. Man, I wish man. they kept that that look of uh, Hulk. I wish they kept that, that look of their movies. That kind of darker yeah, tone. That, that like, too, yeah, literally, like thematically, like theme. Is it thematically? I don't think thematically is the right word here. But, but <laughs> theme theme wise, I'm gonna go with theme wise, just in case I'm wrong. <laughs> like uh, theme wise, and then also visually, like visually, that look of like the movie back then was like darker. Now all these MC movies are they're brighter and they're more colorful. You know yeah. what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with that when it when it calls for it but uh i miss that kind of darker feel but anyway moving on last shotgun question if you could time travel to any time period any era where would you go and why and you can have up to three different choices man i want to go back so far uh, freaking, <laughs> let's go i just want to know what happened back then man. yes dude me too i have so like, many so many different way back thens that i have questions just for. the just to take a peek back in time yeah. uh you know of course you know the how the pyramids say? are built, you know, yes. all those ancient, ancient, yes. all those ancient civilizations that we're just now discovering. Yes. Like, what were they doing back yes, then? Dude. Like, oh my god! Yes, all that, all we can do is theorize, mm-hmm. just based on the smallest little things. Yes. But like, we have no idea. Exactly, man. Exactly. All right. So, Egypt. What are your other two? I want to go. I just want to go back to like my. My my eighties or like yes. the uh, nineties, you know, yes, just like when we were just 80s, being a, like the kid, <laughs> being a kid back back then. That was 100%, fun. That was a good time. A hundred percent, man. Uh, and then, so this is just time going going backwards, right? Well, you could. Uh, it's just time travel as a whole. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really specify. And sometimes people ask me too. Uh, I think now that that I've done this question a, a lot, I think I've done this question for like uh, a year now. People often will ask me too, like, "How am I getting there? Like, how am I getting back? I don't know, man." Like <laughs> the logistics. Yeah. We could be here all day talking about the logistics of time travel. Let's just let's just keep it as simple it. as we can. Where do you want to go? <laughs> Fuck it. So, so the last one's gonna be the dinosaurs, man. Just yes, take a peek, dude. Figure just, it just, out. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. Just let me peek my head around real quick. And yeah, just I don't want to be there too long. I just want to be like in, see, yeah. see a dinosaur, and just be out. In there and out. Thing. Like, okay, they yeah. existed. Now I know You're for right. sure it was cool. real. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Oh man, that was a uh, wow. That was shotgun questions. Um, let's keep it moving, man. You know, we've talked a, a lot about the magazine itself. The the how, when, where, why, you know, it all started, the differences between your seasonal issue versus your mid-season issues, uh, the pros, the cons. Uh, but one thing I want to make sure that everyone is definitely aware of is the process of how to be featured, whether that be the seasonal or the mid-season. Can you break down for everyone what creative cosplays process is for selecting cosplayers to be featured on a cover or featured in the magazine itself? How the Q&As work? I mean, do they get selected by random? Is there a submission process? And and where can all of this be found if so? Just give us like the whole nine yards on how it goes from what they would need to do and know and then what you do thereafter behind the scenes. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, the whole process, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, well, I mean, you don't got to right. break down like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, yes and no. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't got to be I'll, like, you know, then I come I'll, in I'll and I, keep it short. I, I sit down at my desk and then I take a sip of water. Like, you know what I mean? We don't got to go <laughs> yeah, that yeah, far. Yeah. We don't got to go that far. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to summarize it as best as I can for you. Yeah. All right, so everybody, uh, if you are interested in, the, in, in being in our magazine, very simple process. There's a go to our website, creativecosplays.com. There's a submission form that you'll get access to. At this point, depending on what season we're working on next, you will click the seasonal or mid-seasonal. Mm-hmm. There's a small, there's a short um, form on there, a submission form. Anybody can do. Very easy. Um, and then from that, we most likely will have you in our 
next issue, depending on if sp- spots are limited or not. Um, so usually our seasonal issues are the, the cover for those are usually chosen ahead of time. Um, like I said before, yeah. um, this is based off of the line that we have of people who are interested. Um, mm-hmm. We also, we also kind of choose it depending on any upcoming events or collaborations we have with other people. Right. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it's just a matter, just a matter of catching our eye on Instagram at the right time yeah. and, and us discovering you and be like, Hey, your, your work is awesome. Right. Like, let's, let's try to do that. Right. Um, so that's for the, the seasonal ones and then the mid seasons. It, like I said before, mm-hmm. uh, it's based off of just photo quality. Right. Um, it's kind of more of a random choice via submissions uh, though. Right. Is that one via submissions? Or, yeah. Right, submissions. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 And, and then, then uh, the Q and yeah, and then our, yeah, yeah. For our, our seasonal issues, we also do Q and A's with the featured guests, mm, okay. as um, and they also get an extended showcase. Nice. Um, which is Q and A's, which means what precisely? Like uh, 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 more pages. Right. Right. right so okay. they get um, typically eight to ten pages. Nice. Nice. Of, yeah. of space to showcase their work along with the, yeah. you know, the Q&A that we do with them. So right. just a little extra bonus for that person. Yeah. Um, but also in this, also in our seasonal issues, we also announce like similar to your cosplayers of the week. Yeah. Um, we have our seasonal winners. Mm-hmm. So each season there's, there's two cosplay season, season winners and then there's the photographer seasons, season winner. Right. And those are chosen based on submissions. Um, the quality of your photos, your cosplays right. helps determine that, that those choices. But, um, and how many winners are there when, when it does get, uh, when they when they get chosen? Cause it's more than so, one, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's, there's three, there's w- three winners okay. per issue. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, definitely. And then these, and these winners also get promoted on our website where, the, where they're on display as the season winner and they get added to this, yeah. this little wall that we got on there. That's so cool. yeah, it's just something fun to add to the magazine. Yeah. But. Yeah, definitely, man. Awesome. Dude, well, Creative Cosplays, uh, Creative Cosplays mag.com or Creative Cosplays.com? I always forget. So just Creative Cosplays.com for Creative website. Creative Cosplays.com. Yeah. There we go, yes, man. Sir. You guys got to go submit if you haven't yet. Um, I, w- I want to ask you before we get out of here, man, um, the, the the future as a, as a whole, uh, I guess this is kind of a loaded question in a sense because, uh, I mean, feel free to answer. You know, we, we bullet point it off here. But, uh, I mean, what's the future of the magazine itself like i mean you know what is the future in general what would what do you want the future to be like where do you want to go next with the magazine are you do you have any other ideas are you are you mixing it up you got anything that you may be adding in the future to the magazine um you know and then aside from the magazine like you as as a person too both um you know kind of as a graphic designer i guess you could say maybe as a journalist i guess you could say um a, as a cosplayer as well like what's your future too so the the future of the magazine and then the future of of Kyle as a person yeah i wish i, I wish i knew that answer i wish i knew the answer <laughs> knew the future buddy um, i'm sure we all do but uh <laughs> yeah so so this thing is so one of our goals or my personal goals mm-hmm. was being invited to um, New York Comic Con last year, right? And that was that was amazing. And then our other one is to get to San Diego, just to be invited as a guest. Yeah. Um, but this is also this is also something I've been a goal of mine is to try to get this at least ten years in, just to yeah. just to see see where we where we can get at that yeah. point. This would also another future goal would be to do this full time. Yeah, one hundred percent. But trying to figure out how to get that to that point yeah. has been tricky. So yeah. Uh, I'm just going to keep on pushing forward until hopefully maybe something works out. Yeah. But now, um, so now in the future, we also have, we just started offering custom magazines. Nice. So this is now another opportunity for people Mm -hmm. to claim that cover, that cover spot. And have not only that, but you have your full magazine to yourself. So you have, so 24 at, pages oh, about you of, of all your work. Yeah. Oh, you're, wow. you're, you're on, you're on, yeah, Q&A, yeah, you're yeah. on covered. And That's this cool. item can, and then these magazines can also be used for you mm-hmm. to promote at, if you're a guest at a, a con, you, right. know, you, can, you can have, instead of a photo, yeah. here's a magazine with, yeah. you know, with everything. I have, That's I, something I, fun that we've been doing. I have doing. a question. That's kind of cool. I have a question then. Like, so if yeah. somebody was going to do, um, like a, that custom magazine, right? And let's yeah. let's say they didn't have twenty four. This is I got a I got a two two part of this. Let's say they didn't have twenty four pages to fill. Mm-hmm. Could they go with whatever pages they do have to fill? And then and maybe it's like sixteen page magazine. Then like, would you do that? And then the second part is, um, could they put other people in there? Uh, other than themselves, like, could they make a custom magazine yeah. of maybe whatever they wanted? Um, instead of it just being all of them. So two parts there. 
There's, let me go backwards. So there's mm-hmm. the, there's another option where you don't, you can be an event or a group ah. um, if you do want. So if you either want to put, have a magazine for you mm-hmm. or dedicated to a group that you're part of, maybe you have your own Instagram group yeah. of cosplayers or, right. or you're, you want a magazine to cover, to have a full issue that covers an event, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah. So that is an option that we offer now too. Uh, and what was, what was the, the first question? The, the, if let's say they didn't, let's say it wasn't an event; it was just a single person, uh, and they didn't have twenty-four pages of themselves to fill. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, could they do ten pages, sixteen pages? Like, would you do whatever pages right. they they have that they can fill, or yeah. does it have to be twenty-four pages? Yeah. So, so for our minimal issues are twenty-four pages, 24, just because yeah. um, the third-party company that that helps to produce and distribute these right. magazines that's where um, they, that's, that's that's their the limit. Yeah, yeah, twenty-two. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what that's based off. Of. Interesting. And then as far, as far as not having enough content for that, mm-hmm. for that magazine, um, there are, re- if you go to our site to that page mm-hmm. to submit, there are some guidelines you need to take in mind, um, because right. I can't pump these out all the time yeah. while alongside the other magazines. So right. it's kind of like almost like a waiting list type of thing. Nice. Um, that's pretty but cool, it's, still, it's just another opportunity that to, for people to have that, you yeah. know, cover oppor- the cover chance that yeah. I can offer now. So that's, that's been cool. That's pretty cool, man. I dig that, man. I dig that dude. Um, what, what's on the uh, uh, last thing uh, we didn't, we didn't cover. What's on the, what's on the future for you cosplay wise, you as a person, do you think you're going to dive much more into it? I know you mentioned not mm. having much time. We talked about it a little bit in the shotgun questions where you do have a couple things that you're going to be doing, but uh, do you, do you think you're going to dive into it yourself uh, much, much more, or do you think you're still going to just kind of dabble in it? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to dabble in it. Uh, I can't hang, I can't hang with those cosplayers <laughs> these days and this. Yeah. After after walking around as an, in a EVA foam Iron Man suit for a day, or <laughs> it's tight. Even even this even this guy back here, yeah. this muscle suit yeah, man. Dude. Um, uh, yeah, I can't I can't hang out. I can't hang. I don't have that body anymore, you know. For it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let the pros. Yeah, I'll let the pros have their fun while I sit back and you know. Yeah. A hundred percent. Admire their awesome work, you know. A hundred percent, man. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you're not following Creative Cosplays, go follow them at creative.cosplays for one Instagram and Creative Cosplays Mag for the other. Did I got that correct? Yes, sir. All right, there we go. Kyle Kirkner, Creative Cosplays Magazine. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, I know I said that twice already, but seriously, I want to give you the floor uh, to say whatever it is that you want to <coughs> say real quick, uh, whatever's on your mind, plug whatever you want to plug, such as whatever conventions you're going to be at this uh, the remainder of this year, and uh, the floor is yours, man. Well, thanks again, man, for having me. It was a pleasure. Uh, of course, uh, man, of course. This was an opportunity I've been waiting for for a while, so it's good, oh, it's good to make it happen. Thank you, um, so everybody else, thank you so much for all your support to getting us here to where we are now to have over 30 issues now filled with all of you amazing people. So thank you so much for that. Um, upcoming events, we have Cosplay World, mm-hmm. um, which is run by uh, Jason Keith, mm-hmm. uh, Marvel colorist. Um, great guy. We've been putting this together since for the past three years now. We're going to our third year event in Richmond uh, at the convention center. It's coming up uh, June 15th and 16th. Yep. Um, Chaz, you'll be there. I will be there. I will and be there. Full of. We have an insane. We have an insane guest list of uh, yes. awesome cosplay guests yep. and so much more and photographers and everybody right, in between. Man. Yep, it'll be a good time. So if you guys want to get tickets, be sure to go to cosplayworldrichmond.com. There's tickets on there still available. One hundred percent. We'll see you there. Hopefully, that's another chance for you to come meet us. We'll have a booth set up. We'll have a background. Take pictures of that. You can come meet us. And if you've been in our issues. Definitely come see us because we'll have all of our issues behind us for you to come and sign for us. We're trying to collect everybody's signatures yeah. that's been in our in our magazine and meet all of you. Yeah. So um, if you have opportunity to come see us, we'll be there. Um, Cosplay World. Yes. There we go. Other than that, other than that, yeah. Thanks, man. Hell yeah, man. Oh, of course, man. I appreciate it, dude. I think this was awesome. It was a long time coming, and I'm glad that we did it now. As for Cosplay World Con, like he said, I will be there as well, June 15th and 16th. I will be there in full effect doing videography as well as possibly cosplaying myself. I'm um, bringing some of my cosplays. We'll see what happens because I'm <laughs> I'm gonna be exhausted doing videography, and I've got a panel, uh, the content, a uh, cosplay content creation panel, Saturday, June 15th at 12 p.m. on the main stage. Uh, as the by the time this episode comes 
out. Oh God, I don't know if I want to say it because I don't know the exact, uh, for the next announcement, but as of right now, we've got Caleb Weeks as a panelist, Heroes for Hire Costumes as a panelist, and the third panelist may be announced uh, by the time this comes out, may not be. I'm not quite sure, so I won't spoil it here just in case it hasn't been yet, but there will be uh, announcements for the panelists come week by week, so stay tuned to all of our Instagrams because it's all prom- it's promoted everywhere, um, and, uh, and we'll see you there. And uh, for everybody that's tuning in right now, thank you for watching, for liking, for commenting, for sharing, for doing all of those beautiful things that you do over on youtube.com slash side project podcast when you go down you hit that big red subscribe button and when you hit it, it goes oh and it says thank you for what for subscribing and and you get 100 sexy project points that you can do whatever you want with them you can put them in your pocket and you can save them for later you can buy chips with them and you can buy uh, the side project merch with them can you really no you can't i don't know why i said that because you can't actually do it but we're working on that though chario Figure that out. Jesus, making me look stupid. Anyway, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for doing that and for watching and for liking and following and rating on Spotify. His videos are available on Spotify as well. Like I said, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, And by the way, thank you so much uh, for 10K views on YouTube here, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, for my short film, Siri, A Witcher Tale, starring Paper Moon Cosplay. Man, that, that is absolutely awesome because YouTube is a grind, man. Like, YouTube is a grind. As, as crazy as Instagram is right now, and it's hard, you know, to pump those numbers out for everybody. Like, things are, are getting harder. It's lowering uh, reach and engagement. YouTube is, anybody knows the YouTube grind? It's it's insane. It's way harder on YouTube. So thank you. So 10K may not seem a lot like a lot when you see some of the numbers that occur on Instagram here and there with a lot of the stuff that a lot of us do. Um, not, I'm not talking about just me, a lot of us. Uh, but on YouTube, 10K is, is, is a grind, man. It's a climb. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart, man, because uh, I, I wrote that, I directed that, I shot that. Uh, I edited that. I did the uh, uh, the score for that. And I did the theme music for that. I put a lot into that, and I, I, I it feels amazing to know that it was appreciated. Like from the bottom of my heart, that's really really cool. It was my first short film, and there's more short film films coming. Thank you so much. If you're looking for me, you can find me on Instagram at i g hate chazzy. That is my personal, and everything else you need to find me at is on the screen right about now. If you're looking for the podcast as a whole, you can find it on Instagram at side project podcast. Remember that's project with a K for me, for Kyle of Creative Cosplays Magazine. We are out of here in my vintage age.